Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for June 9th, 2020. I'm teaching a series entitled Faith and Patience. Faith and Patience, the Wonder Twins. The, this is part 39 of the series. I trust that this series has been a blessing to you thus far. The title of today's message is God Can Bless Your Work. I'm talking about a God who wants to bless you at work. If you have a business, God can bless your business. If you have a career, God can bless your career. If you're a student, God can bless you while, I, while you're in school. I'm talking about a God who is not confined to a building. God is not confined to a church service. God is not confined to a church community. I'm talking about a God that will bless you when you're outside of church. God God can bless your work. Let's talk about it today. James 1, 2 through 4, the Bible says, my fellow believers, you know what? When it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, you should see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. Why, Paul? Because you know, oh, I'm sorry, why James? Because you know that at that point, your faith is being tested. And when your faith is tested, it develops inside of you the power to endure all things. And when this power it is this patient endurance grows inside of you stronger and stronger and stronger. It actually releases perfection or maturity into every area, every aspect of your life until the point where there is nothing missing and nothing lacking and you're a grown up Christian and you know how to believe God and how to stand in faith and not be moved by what happens on the outside. You got it? And in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, the Bible says that there's a time and there's a season for everything under, under heaven. And everything is going to happen in your life at just the right time. You got to learn to trust God's timing. You got to learn to set your watch of expectation to God's clock of manifestation. And then Genesis 41 and 49, the Bible says that Joseph stored up so much grain that it was like the sands of the sea. He stored up so much grain that it could not be measured. This had nothing to do with church. And this had nothing to do with, with tongues or laying hands on the sick. None of that. God blessed Joseph to store up grain at work. Let's talk about it. So what does this mean to you today? I have six things to share with you in this morning. As I share these six, I want you to open up your heart to receive. Six things. Number one, here we go. God's blessing is not just reserved for church services. I, I think, I don't know, it's frustrating to me sometimes when I talk to people who are just fixated and focused on church. What do you do? Like, what do you do? I'm an usher. You know, what do you do? I'm on the praise team. What do you do? I work in the parking lot. I appreciate all of that. But listen, God is not limited to Sunday mornings. God is not limited to Wednesday nights. I'm, we serve a God who's bigger than all of that. So let's talk about it. God's wisdom was operating on Joseph. And as a result, the nation of, of Egypt was able to prosper like no other nation in the middle of a famine. They had so much grain in their reserves that it could not be measured. It was like the sands of the sea. And what's interesting is that what I'm pointing out this morning is that God blessed Joseph at work. And this is something that some people just don't realize. They don't open up their heart to it. Many believers today think that God, his blessing, his favor are for things like Bible study, you know, missions, charitable projects, church services. They focus so much on what you're going to do in church that they fail to open up their heart to a God who wants to be the God of your entire life, not just church services. Many believers limit their faith to Sunday mornings, to church buildings. And, and we serve a real God who can deal with you every day with real challenges in a real way. Let me talk about it today. God blessed Abraham, Abraham with material wealth and, and, and gave him a physical child to the point where they received the child when they were past childbearing stage. God blessed Isaac, his son, to reap a hundredfold harvest in the middle of a famine. God blessed, blessed Jacob, his son, all right, with more money in one year than he had received in the previous 20 years working for his father-in-law, Laban. God blessed Joseph, the guy that we've been talking about. God blessed him and he was prosperous as a slave. He was prosperous as a prisoner to the point that when he was a slave and when he was a prisoner, he was living better than most men who were, who were actually free. Why? Because the favor of God, the blessing of God was on him and it was on him at work. None of what I just said, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, none of that had to do with tongues or the laying on of hands or spiritual blessings or the Holy Spirit. None of that. This was a, this is the blessing of Abraham. It is a natural blessing. It is a material blessing for this world. And in Galatians 3 and 29, the Bible says that God made him, Jesus, to be a curse for us, right? So that the blessing of Abraham 
could come upon the Gentiles. And so a, a lot of us today have opened up our heart to the blessing of Jesus, which, which is a spiritual blessing, but we fail to open up our heart to the blessing of Abraham, which is not a spiritual blessing. Abraham never laid hands on anybody. They never raised the sick. They never fed 5,000 with fishes and loaves. None of that. It was a natural blessing. You need both. And you can open up your heart to both. Say amen to that. It's okay. It's okay for you to have the spiritual side and the natural side. God is not opposed to it. Number two, but for you to get to the point where God is your source, you must switch systems. I'm going to talk about that today. You got to switch systems. You got to switch systems to, to the point where now you're relying on God as your source. Lord, you are my source. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. You are my supply. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had to switch systems. Before Joseph showed up, Pharaoh had a system. His system relied on sorcerers. His, his system relied on soothsayers. His system relied on magicians. And, 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 and so these people did demonic things and he got guidance and wisdom from them. And then when Joseph showed up and they couldn't answer the dreams and Joseph showed up and the hand of God was on Joseph, Joseph said, hey, this is what God, Jehovah, the, the God of, my, of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the, the God of my forefathers, this is what God says. And God gave him the interpretation of the dream. And in that moment, Pharaoh had to make a decision. In that moment, Pharaoh's like, okay, I can either go with this boy who I don't know and this new God that I never heard of, or I can rely on the people that I've been relying on. And incredibly enough, Pharaoh actually switched systems and said, I'm going to rely on Joseph. And he let Joseph store up all this grain. 20% of everything that came in was being stored up for seven years, all because Joseph put all his confidence. I mean, uh, Pharaoh put all his confidence in Joseph and Joseph had all his confidence in God. Why? Because at the time they switched systems. And then when the famine came, why? Because they were totally relying on God. They were the only nation to have grain in the middle of a famine. And so Egypt became the richest nation on the planet at the time because the king relied on God. He switched systems. Number three, Joseph's grandfather, Abraham, switched systems. I'm, at, at some point today, I'm going to ask you, have you switched systems? Like, do you know that God is your source, right? But let's talk about Abraham. I'm going to talk about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Let's start with Abraham. Now that we know that Pharaoh switched systems, let's talk about Abraham. Abraham was 75 years old. His wife is 65 years old when the Lord shows up to him in Ur of the Chaldeans. And so he's there in Ur of the Chaldeans and they are worshiping idols. They are worshiping gods that you can see. And this God that, you, that he could not see. So this invisible God shows up. And matter of fact, they were worshiping many gods, right? And so now a single God shows up. A single God shows up to Abram and says, I am the Lord. Listen, I want to bless you. This is something I came up with in my heart, not, not something you came up with in your heart. I want to bless you. I want to exalt you. I want to make your name great. I want to bless the, all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that, that curse you. But I need you to leave everything that you know, go to a place that I'm going to show you. And so Abraham had to leave. Abraham, you're talking about switching systems. He's 75 years old. His wife is 65 years old. And it was like, Psh, all right, let's try this. This is why he's known as the father of faith. He had the audacity to leave. He left everything that he knew, right, for, for a place that he didn't know where he was going, for a God that he could not see. And he had to believe that this invisible God would show up in his life in ways that can be seen. And God made him rich in cattle and silver, and gold, and God did it because he was willing to switch systems. He was willing to rely on him. Joseph's, number four, Joseph's grandfather, Isaac, did the same thing. He switched systems. Now, this is Abraham's son, right? So Abraham's son was dealing with a famine. He remembered, oh, my father dealt with a famine, and God blessed him, so I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to do whatever God tells me to do. So now he's in the middle of a famine, right? So now he's there, and the Lord told, told him, don't leave, Stay in Gerar. Don't go to Egypt. 
And he's like, okay, so what do you want me to do? Why do you want me to stay somewhere where there's a famine in the land? Why do you want me to stay? Listen, the crops are not producing anything. The clouds are not releasing any rain. This, this is the middle of a famine. Why do you want me to stay here? He was like, because I want to show something to you. And then I want to exalt you so that people can see who I am. He said, in the middle of a famine, when it was not raining, when the, when the ground was not producing, the Lord led Isaac to sow a seed. To, to plant, I mean, he sowed in the middle of a famine. That doesn't make sense. God will lead you to do something that doesn't make sense. He sowed a crop when, when the, the fields were not producing. And what happened? God caused them to receive a hundredfold harvest in one year. The Bible says that he received a hundredfold return. He received a hundredfold harvest in one year. Why? Because he switched systems and he relied on God. And so, and in the very next verse, the Bible says that as a result, he became very rich. He owned so many flocks and herds and had so many servants that the Philistines became jealous of him. This is what happened with Isaac when he switched systems. Number five, Joseph's father, Jacob, had to switch systems. I love the story of Jacob. Here you have Jacob, and I'm talking to business people today. I'm going to get to the point. Listen, I want you to pay attention that that that. In God, you yes, we can do buying and selling, but what we rely on is sowing and reaping. Oh man, I'm just hold on for a minute. Joseph's father, Jacob, had to learn to switch systems. He was working for his father-in-law for 20 years, Laban. This joker, first of all, had tricked him with one wife, then he tricked him for another wife, and then he has the Bible says that he has switched his pay. He had changed his pay 10 times in 20 years. And he was getting nowhere. He had been working for 20 years. He was working for his father-in-law. His father-in-law was getting rich because of him, but he was not getting nothing. And so he's like, man, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know God. He's the God of my grandfather, Abraham. He's the God of my father, Isaac, and he's my God too. Why is it that I am not prospering? Because he was relying on the wrong person. He was relying on Laban. So he, the Lord shows him something and says, listen, I want you to switch systems. I want you to stop relying on Laban to give you a paycheck. And I want you to switch systems and go to this thing with the spotted and the speckled uh, animals. And so, you know, this is a great story. I don't have time to tell it. But, but anyway, uh, he switched systems. He goes to this spotted and speckled. And there was only just a few of those. And Laban was like, well, this dude is stupid. He wants to go to spotted and speckled. I only have a few. Boom. God made the spot and the speckle to multiply. And before you knew it, now here you have Jacob. Jacob became rich. The Bible says that he made more in one year. He had worked for his father-in-law for 20 years. In the 21st year, he made more in that one year than he had made in the previous 20 years combined. I'm talking about why? Because you switch systems when you totally rely on God. Number six, listen, I'm asking you, have you switched systems? Is your reliance completely on God? Have you moved away from relying on your ability, your power, your strength? Are you just living, relying on your paycheck? Do you think that your job is your source? You, you got that good government job? Do you think that the, the government is your source? No, God has to be your source. When you switch systems, you say, you know what? I'm going from buying and selling to sowing and reaping. I'm going to live by what I sow. I, 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 well, I'm going to work, but I'm receiving seed and I'm going to live by what I sow. My total reliance is on God and I'm believing God to be my source. My, I am living in him and in him alone. The, the, let me close out by, by this last point, which is the point that I was trying to get to. None of what I said today, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, none of those people did miracles. None of them. None of them multiplied fishes and loaves. None of them. None of them walked on water. None of them caused the blind to see, the lame to walk, the dumb to speak. None of them ha had word of, uh, you know, word of knowledge and word of wisdom. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. None of them. This was all natural stuff. So God can bless your work. I'm talking about natural things. This is the blessing of Abraham. Listen. I know a lot of people who focus on just the spiritual, the blessing of Jesus, right? And so I have the Holy Spirit and I have spiritual gifts in operation in my life. And I appreciate that. But the blessing of Abraham was not that. All the people that I mentioned, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, God made them prosper in this world, right? 
And so don't reject that. The Bible says that God made Jesus a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham could come upon the Gentiles. You have access to both. You have the natural blessing, that's the blessing of Abraham. You have the spiritual blessing, that's the blessing of Jesus. So guess what? God can bless you at work, not just at church. So yes, at church, serve in whatever capacity and the anointing is on your life there. But when you're at work, the anointing is also on your life. Look at everything that God did for Joseph and that had nothing to do with the church service. It had nothing to do with the praise and worship team. It had nothing to do with an altar call. It had everything to do with real life out here in this world, making a difference. God has sent you into this world to make a difference. You can do ministry, do ministry in the marketplace. God, look at your hands and speak to your hands, prophesy to your hands. Say, hands, you are blessed hands and God blesses the work of my hands. Whatever you put your hands on, God can cause it to prosper. So I want you to go to work today and whistle while you work. I'm talking about go to work, expecting the blessing to flow at work. The same blessing that's on you at church, if you sing on the praise and worship team, that same anointing that's on you there, there's an anointing on you to work. If you're, if you're a business owner, there's an anointing on you for your business to prosper. In the middle of a famine, in the middle of a global downturn, in the middle of an economy that's taking the tank, God can cause you to increase. God can cause you to reap a hundredfold in the middle of a famine. God is not moved by famine, but he needs you to rely on him. Go to work and expect God to bless your work. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and speak this over your life. Say, Father, you are my source and my supply. You protect me from events that cripple others. And as you do, I declare that I will use my strength to be a blessing and not a burden. As the world gets darker, your light in me gets brighter. And people who used to laugh at me <laughs> are now coming to me for help. When the world is struggling, I am winning because your grace empowers me to prosper in ways that are not reliant on the systems of this world. I am success in the middle of failure. I am light in the midst of darkness. I am hope in the middle of despair, not because I'm so good, but because you're so good and because I was willing to switch systems. Greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. I know that I'm teaching on Joseph. I know I was flowing in one vein, but listen, this was heavy on me this morning. This was for somebody who's struggling, who's struggling right now, and you, and you forgot that God is your source. You got to switch systems. Look up and not down. Look forward and not backward. Greater is coming for you. Do me a favor, please share this message on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. If you're watching on YouTube Live or Facebook Live, leave me some comments in the chat. I love you and God loves you more. Go out there and work and God will bless the work of your hands. God bless you.